Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see ASME, Section 2, Part D, Subpart 1. We have all these courses available on our Thinkific platform. To learn more about these courses, register with the link given in the description. Now we are going to see the structure of Section 2, Part D. Uh, sub part 1 is mechanical properties sub part 2 is physical property sub part 3 is the external pressure calculation charts so these are the three sub parts then there is mandatory and non mandatory matrices we'll see about that okay now if we see in sub part 1 there are several tables you know not only one stress table there are several tables applicable here i'll just ask one question why do you think there are several tables why not a single table anybody will like to respond if you want to respond just write in the chat box that why do you think there are several tables why not a single table see finally what we need is the property physical or uh, mechanical properties of the material like yield tensile allowable stresses so we can cover that in a single table so Himanshu is saying division 1, division 2, okay. So to differentiate ferrous and non ferrous great. Come on, we are on the right track. Different allowable stress, yes. Himanshu is right. Group of materials, Srinivas, great. So the basically now we understand that so there are several materials, okay. And they are grouped very differently. So, one is material, which can be grouped differently like ferrous and non-ferrous. And there are also like bolting material, which the completely different failure phenomena occurs there. So, majorly will divide into three different categories. One is ferrous material, second is non-ferrous and third is bolting material. There can be several categories, but the basic of these table division is these three different groups ferrous non-ferrous and bolting material now the other part like himanshu mentioned that we have different allowable we have different factor of safety when we are talking about different design code like we know we have section one which is for power boilers we have section three for nuclear section eight division one for general application in division one also we have no, section 8 also we have division 1, division 2, division 3. Okay. So we have various design codes and the basic difference is the factor of safety. And factor of safety is inbuilt into the allowable stress value. So we need different allowable. We need different allowable stresses for these different codes. And so different tables. Okay. So I hope uh, you got clarified why we need, we are going to see what are, you know, what is covered in these different tables. Okay. But right now we understand that the requirement is, you know, we should have lots of tables to differentiate this. Okay. If you open section two, part D below the each name, like table one, a, you will see below that which code it is applicable so you don't have to be you don't have to remember what i just said if you just refer below the name of the table you will see for which design code that table is applicable so you don't have to remember all these for section 8 division 1 definitely you can remember that table 1a is what you have to refer and table 3 for bolting that is what you have to remember other things you will be able to find when you refer that code okay so table 1a what are the things which are covered we are going to see uh, in the code also if you have opened the code you can just see that we'll also try to open the code and see but basically table 1a covers what what are the information which are given first of all chemical composition so not exact chemical composition but type like whether it is carbon steel whether it is uh, low alloy steel or chrome molly what it is you know so kind of material name which is given this is a non-mandatory 
information because you know uh, it does not come under mandatory requirements like if something is mentioned as chrome moly it can be low elastic okay or even a carbon steel so you have to for actual chemical composition you have to refer part a where you'll get exact chemical composition of the material so apart from that what it will be covering it will be covering tensile strength yield strength of the material always remember that these values are minimum okay whatever you get to, from the table it is minimum tensile and minimum yield if you test the material you'll be getting the value more than this okay not less if it is less than it does not qualify for that material okay we will also see the temperature limit each and every code has assigned a maximum temperature limit on which that material can be used okay like if we talk about section 8 division 1 sa 516 can be used up to 538 if you go into table 1a you will find that that what is the maximum applicable temperature so for each code the criteria is different same sa 516 if you are using in section 3 the upper limit is only 370 i cannot use beyond 370 degrees celsius same material but the same material under section 8 division 1 i can use up to 538 okay so that is another difference between you know, the different code and its uses so that limit also you will find in section 2 part d table 1a okay also there are some external pressure chart numbers like you might have referred cs1 cs2 which we use for external pressure calculation that is also mentioned so that you can exactly refer that chart while calculating the external pressure okay we will be seeing that where it is covered okay then the most important part for which the stress table are created that is allowable stress so at different temperature we can directly go and find the allowable stresses which we are going to use in the thickness calculation okay. so allowable stresses are the most important thing which as a designer so we can directly find in these tables and also you will see the creep temperatures where that creep starts for a material so once that allowable stress properties are mentioned in italic that means from there creep starts okay so creep is a temperature dependent for, uh, phenomena and if creep is applicable we have to go with fea to estimate what time it may sustain so that always given in time okay the, the name itself says that it's time dependent properties so how much it will elongate when the failure will happen that depends upon the time okay so that's the reason it's called time dependent range okay now same one b so structure of all these different tables is same you will find the type of like material name whether it is carbon steel or alloy steel high alloy steel then you will find what is the external pressure chart cs1 cs2 what is the maximum temperature applicability for that material under the different codes like section 1 section 3 section 8 so this structure is common in each and every table okay so like 1b which is applicable for non-ferrous like al aluminium copper nickel refractory materials for all these materials also the structure is completely same now the table 3 5a and 5b so table 3 we saw that it is for bolting material 5a and 5b 5a is for ferrous 5b for non-ferrous and it is for division 2 okay so see now there are two different things you will might have noticed if you might have seen any time th these tables like we discussed table 1a table 3 table 5a 
these tables talks about maximum allowable stress okay while these tables 2a 2b you will find design stress intensity you won't find maximum allowable stress you will find design stress intensities because that is how the allowable is defined in these codes so if you refer like 2a is applicable for what it's applicable for section 3 so if you refer there you will find the allowable stress is given as design stress intensities that's not a allowable so different terminology has been used so accordingly this table also mentioned this different names for that apart from these tables you know, you'll also find table u and table y1 there were also table u2 which was earlier there even in 2019 edition you will find a table u2 which is now deleted so now we have only table u and y1 so u gives the tensile strength requirement based on various temperature now it's, so when i say tensile strength you will say that always we have seen that in table 1 okay table 1 a 1 b there was value for tensile strength and yield strength so this is also tensile strength but varying with temperature because in table 1 a you will get just the minimum value at room temperature these are the values with different temperatures so tensile and yield if you want to have at different temperature you can use these tables and find the value so table u and y1 is meant for that okay now so this was the structure of sub part 1 whatever we covered this is part of sub part 1 of section 2 part d so sub part 1 covers mechanical properties okay so stress tables table 1 a 1 b till 5 a 5 b and then table u and fiber this is the sub part one